BC born Aaron Prochet writes a country song. He draws on his early rock influences, adds some hurting lyrics and real life hangover experiences to entertain his fans from coast to coast. He has been singing since he was a young boy. He now loads in, loads out, tours a lot, and releases great CDs. His new one is called In the Driver's Seat. It is my pleasure to welcome the hockey loving country celebrity Aaron Prochet to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you very much. Well, I read that if you weren't doing music, you would be playing pro hockey. Well, I'd God be attempting willing. to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, ever since I was a kid, I grew up in Kitimat, um, up north mm -hmm. BC. By the smelter? By the, yeah, the, the Alcan aluminum smelter, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I played hockey since, uh, I can't remember, four or five years old. So, and I still play as much as possible. And, if I had a choice to go back and <laughs> do it really? all over, I'd, I'd mm -hmm. definitely make hockey my uh, my main focus. Well, sure. Then yeah. you'd have Bobby or knees. Yeah, but that's okay. I kind of do already. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Yeah. Who taught you to sing? Did you do it naturally? Yeah. Did you take some lessons? What? I was adopted. Uh, here's how the story goes. It's very strange. Like, I was adopted when I was two, and not a lot of people know that. Um, now everybody knows it. Apparently. Uh, but uh, my dad was a singer, and I didn't really realize that until I was older really? but I sang my whole life and your biological that, father my biological father my 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 real father and uh, I didn't even really know much about that at all mm -hmm. and uh, I still I remember be getting caught when I was having a bath and seven years old and singing and you know everybody thought why well, you're really good and, uh, you know mm -hmm. but uh, as I grew older um, hockey was my main passion it was the, my first love and uh, didn't really pay any attention to if I could sing or not, and uh, it was something that I kind of fell into, and it turns out that I, I could sing somewhat, so I, it was something that was just in me from, uh, from birth. I think you sing better than somewhat, <laughs> and I grew up with country, so I usually recognize a good singer. Oh, well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Though. But it wasn't always country, because I know you were influenced yeah. very early in your career, uh, rock. Yes, heavily. Rock, rock, who? Well, particularly. bands like uh, Def Leppard, um, going back to the 80s, Van Halen, I was a huge fan of them, ACDC, Brian Adams was a huge influence on me, still is to this day, and uh, a, a lot of those guys, Bruce Springsteen, um, mm -hmm. I could just go on and on and on, but yeah, and that was my first on. real... Well, I could go on and on with Bruce Springsteen, but yeah. apparently he's taken. <laughs> uh huh. So in the driver's seat, speaking of Brian yeah. Adams, uh, you collaborated with some great songwriters mm -hmm. uh, on this album. Tell me about uh, Brian's song. Well, well it's I, not Brian's song. It is Brian's song. I didn't it's actually. Drive. Yes, he wrote it with a gentleman by the name of Phil Thornalley, mm. who's from the UK, and uh, has written uh, big songs like "Torn" for Natalie and Julia back in the '90s, and. Uh, uh, it was a song that I heard, and I thought, man, this is kind of cool. This is a, I heard the rock version. Um, a gentleman by the name of Shannon Knoll in Australia, who is the Australian Idol winner, uh, did a version of it, and I heard it, and I thought, man, I really love this song. Mm. Can I countryfy it and keep its sort of rock identity as well? Sure. And uh, sure enough, I think I did a half-decent job of it. So. so you did. And what does it take to countryfy it? And by that, I mean, do you have to add red high heels and uh, <laughs> a dog and a pickup truck? And Pretty much, a yeah. A spurned lover. Yeah, and a, yeah, the polka dot dress, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I added, uh, there was a, 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 a banjo added to it. Um, and just the country inflections that you normally get for a country song. So... But it's, uh, it's almost a, a rock song mm -hmm. with a, a few little country flavors. Sure, I can hear the rock influence in here uh, yeah. in, uh, in the driver's seat. Uh, you dedicate this to a fellow named Mike Norman. Yes. Tell me about him. Mike was a guy that I met, oh, I guess in the early 90s. He was a keyboard player, played uh, with numerous bands. Mm -hmm. He was doing a little production here and there. Mike and I became uh, really good friends and, and co-wrote a few songs. Uh, and what happened was, is over the last 20 years, um, uh, within the last five, he had contracted cancer. And uh, originally, it started in his tongue and, and went down into his lymph no or lymph glands. And um, uh, so Mike, I asked Mike, he couldn't sing much anymore, but he was still playing piano. And I asked him to arrange uh, for the last song in the album, I Want to Be In It With You. Uh, the string arrangement for it and uh, ironically enough we ended up getting the string arrangement via email 
okay. as you can do it through the internet sure. nowadays, uh, the day that he passed away. And, uh, wow. and it, was, it, it was a real a special thing that that actually happened. Mm. Sad, sad day, but uh, there was something bright that came out of it, and it was my highlight of the whole CD. So I felt that it, uh, it was needed to be dedicated to Mike, this whole entire album. Uh, too young, too soon, all of that. Yeah, mm. way too young and too talented, and the good do die young. Right, and everybody says so, and you know in the music biz how it is. Everybody doesn't say so about everybody else, yeah. but when you mention his name, they say, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Everybody uh, knows him. Early country, uh, I grew up listening to Willie Nelson before you were born, but he's still around. <laughs> yep. And there were lyrics like, there are more old drunks than there are old doctors, so I think we better have another round. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, the lyrics have turned up a bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it all comes around. Country's, country music is, is such a cool form of music because it, it really tells a story graphically and in-depth within mm -hmm. a, a three-minute and 30-second span. Right. And um, uh, nothing against rock or pop or anything like that, but it's pretty um, pretty loose. And they can pretty much write whatever they want to write about, and you can make up your own story to mm -hmm. it. Country music has always been, with the Willie Nelsons, with the George Jones, with the George Straits, they've been very graphic, detailed stories within a short amount of time. And uh, I try and keep that with mine as well. And it's, it's about having fun and trying to relay that, that uh, little bit of fun that I like to have sure. in a less than four minute mm -hmm. span. Uh, your uh, trip so far, uh, touring with Alan Jackson, Brooks yeah. and Dunn, who has split up, but yeah. Yeah. still like each other, yeah. apparently. Just done. <laughs> Just done, <laughs> done for done. now, and that happens, yeah. departure. Uh, was there um, a particular night where you thought, um, I'm, hitting the, I'm heading towards the bigger time? Where you got a response from an audience, I know you have rabid fans, but where you thought, you know, this was a good gig for me. Yeah, rabid is a really good word, by the way. Uh, I would describe my <laughs> fans as rabid. Die hard. Indeed, yeah. No, they're, and they're crazy. Uh, my, uh, my turning point, I would say, would have to have been uh, Vancouver in 2006 when I opened for uh, Brooks and Dunn. Mm. And it was at uh, the then GM place, now Rogers Arena. And uh, when there was 17,000 people there, and even the Brooks and Dunn guys said, we've never seen this many people for an opener for the opener because it was myself, Sarah Evans, and then Brooks and Dunn. Yeah. And I started the show at 7 p.m. and the place was jammed. And That's everybody's singing sign. along to the songs. Yeah. That's a good sign and because sometimes we come later. Yeah, exactly. It's mm. typically, well, well, we'll make it for the, uh, the main act. But um, that was my point where I said, I went, wow, this is amazing. I'm yeah. surrounded by all these people. And uh, they're there for me as well. It's, sure. it was, that was my point. And my hockey career doesn't look all that promising. <laughs> well, maybe. You still play a little, I'm sure. I do, yeah, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I've learned to golf a little bit more than oh, that. play hockey these days. Yeah. I love that game. I know. I know. Because every day is a new day. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> really? The person yeah. who went to sleep, who was a fairly good golfer the night before, yeah. wakes up in the morning, has another round, and you think, what happened yeah. in the night? Mm -hmm. exactly. Tell me about touring. Uh, uh, loading in, loading out, yeah. on the bus, schmoozing. I know you write about it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a song on the album called Wild On, which really kind of gives, I think it's pretty graphic, and a, a sense of what it's really like behind the scenes. A lot of people want to, um, to know what it's like. The fans yeah. really, really want to know what it's like. And thanks to things like Twitter and Facebook, I can show pictures, I can give videos and that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I love touring. Um, I have to say it's really my second home. When I'm at home too long, I feel like I'm missing something, and I, I literally have to go uh, do the some love shows of on the, the road. road. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really, really do love it. And even though um, you know you could be spending one day in St. John's, Newfoundland, and the next day is Edmonton, it, that travel time really doesn't bother me. It's well, what about clean up Sundays at your house? <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you when it's clean up Sunday? True, yeah. But I, you know, I, I, I still, when I get home, I, that's that's the cool thing about what I do as well, mm -hmm. and what I've managed to be able to uh, accomplish is because I have a home life and I have a road life, and I never mix the two together. Uh, when I'm off the road, I'm dad first of all, and three sons, uh, three boys, yes, and uh, I, I focus on them. And that's really what it's all about. 
And the lady in your life, or you talk about a, a beautiful lady who's changed you, or maybe that was somebody else's. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, no, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the girl. Jessie is her name. She's been uh, uh, behind me 100%, especially in the last three or four years when I did make so many changes in personnel with business. Mm -hmm. um, she's, uh, she's really been the focus of, uh, of keeping in, in line. Sure. Yeah.